Hi, this is Dark Journalist with breaking news for part three in my New Age Deep State series. Now, things have taken an even more bizarre turn as a disclosure marketing campaign has resorted to outright deceptive tactics in order to co-op the important research topic of the secret space program. Now, in part two, we revealed Roger Ramsar, a.k.a. Emma Gold, a.k.a. Roger Richards, is Corey Good's business partner and has been the driving force behind the Corey Kids promotion of video games, comic books, and t-shirts. Now, in this crucial episode, we'll examine the occult symbolism in Corey Good's blue avian imagery. Let's go take a deeper look. Since the revelations presented here for the first time concerning the marketing and cult development scheme being arranged by Gaia TV whistleblower Corey Good and his business partner Roger Ramsar, many people have come forward discussing the disingenuous nature of the shadow marketing campaign for disclosure. Part of this campaign was the so-called Corey's Kids theme of bringing young adults aboard Corey's cult of blue avians to attract a teen market to his space fantasy presented as the truth. Corey's Kids include Jordan Sather from Destroying the Illusion and Teresa Yaneros from Divine Frequency. According to sources, these young people make no money and are being used with promises of things to come in the future. Their work is directed by Roger Ramsar, who we profiled in part two. This marketing campaign unscrupulously listed legendary UFO author Linda Moulton Howe as a co-author and contributor on an upcoming book series called The Case for the Secret Space Program. The book is to be published in July by Consciousness Renaissance, or CR Publishing, a business front of Corey Good and Roger Ramsar. When Howe was alerted to this outrage, she sent the following email to the principals involved. Quote, I received this email inquiry today and wondered if you all could let me know what's happening since I'm not involved in co-authoring a book on the secret space program, which I understand will be a complex book project of many voices, Corey's and others, but not me. So why would anyone be trying to tie me into your book project? The banners displaying Linda Moulton Howe's name were displayed prominently at the Contact in the Desert event without Linda's knowledge or consent. A deliberate attempt to link Linda to a project that Good and Ramsar were preparing for a rush release in July. As previously mentioned, Corey's kid Jordan Sather was listed as a co-author of the book. When we reported in part two he would be a co-author, he complained in a video posted on his YouTube channel that Dark Journalist had left out Linda Moulton Howe and suggested it was due to sinister motives. Let's listen. Uh, but anyway, it's very interesting that they uh, didn't want to say that I was working with all those other names on this project. I mean, Dr. Bob Wood is a physicist that went to Cornell and he worked at Douglas for 34 years. Yeah, that's, <laughs> there's a reason that he didn't want to say those other names is because it gives a lot of freaking credence to this project. And also one of the other names that was up on that board mentioned a contact in the desert with none other than Linda Moulton Howe. Sather cited the inclusion of Linda Moulton Howe's name on their banner at Contact in the Desert, later adding, she may or may not be working with us. But the impression was clear and advertised for all to see at Contact in the Desert. No contract, no agreement, no permission from Linda Moulton Howe at all. Posting on social media groups like Alfred Weber's website, he wrote, quote, why didn't he mention Linda Moulton Howe's interest in the project too? Her name was up on the board during the announcement of it at Contact in the Desert. Funny enough, he didn't show the picture on the giant Contact in the Desert screen in his video. Unquote. Sather was linking Howe to the book series. Ranzer had sent his puppet Sather out to hit back after we revealed his satanic connections. He didn't come out with his own video response. He always acts through surrogates, the Cory kids. Here we see Ramser using Corey's kid, Jordan Sather, to create the impression they're working with Linda Moulton Howe. In a professional business environment, you don't advertise someone's name on a banner at a major conference as being a co-author on a secret space program book with no permission, no contract, nothing. The fact that you think she may or may not work with you means nothing. This is the height of unprofessional, unethical advertising. The presence of the banners and their function were confirmed by Jordan when he said, we had banners with her name on them. Jordan had been duped by his director, Roger Ramser. He didn't get the memo. There was no Linda Moulton Howe connection to the book. Ramser had Corey's kid, Jordan Sather, create a false impression on camera. Ramser figured no one would notice. He figured wrong. continuing manipulation and exploitation of young YouTube creators enrolled in the Corey's Kids marketing push was powered up with the launch of the secret space program Gear Stores. This program offered through Corey's Kids website is part of the three-year marketing plan for disclosure. 
This plan completely trivializes research into UFOs and the secret space program with brand promotion and cool gear sales, selling out veteran researcher information on these crucial topics to what looks like little more than a Reebok ad. When the plan dries up, or good story cracks under scrutiny, as we're seeing signs of now, Corey's kids will be left holding the bag. As we saw in part two, Corey's business partner Roger Ramsar embraced satanic imagery in his artwork and music for over a decade. The blue avian alien theme that Good brought forward also contains occult symbolism. The hand gesture the blue avian is making is a clear match to the opposite hand of Baphomet. Many user forums have pointed out that the feet of the blue avians resemble goat's feet more than bird feet. Some see outlines of occult symbolism throughout the image. In part two, we raise the question, is this new disclosure movement being run by Ramzar and Corey Good not UFO disclosure? As we've seen, they don't even use the term but rather Luciferic disclosure, where the dominion of Lucifer will be achieved on Earth. There's a lot of occult imagery in association with Corey Good and his team. Is that just a coincidence? Is the blue avian alien theme just a space-age version of a satanic cult? We need to ask that question, and we need to get real answers. Corey and Ramzar's response to these revelations rising to the surface range from odd to really odd. Ramsar and Good are doubling down with legal threats to anyone who reveals the facts behind their operation. They've threatened dark journalists with legal action publicly on Project Camelot's YouTube channel, with Good claiming that Gaia TV is joining his lawsuit. A quick check on that fact proved it was completely false. Ramsar's public comments also included legal threats for my New Age Deep State series. Why? The information used is widely available online. Why isn't Ramsar owning up to his own work? After all, if your conscience is clear and you're operating in the light, why would you need to intimidate others into silence? Are they making legal threats against free speech in an attempt to intimidate me or anyone who asks questions about who they are and what they're doing with their three-year disclosure plan? Is it a marketing campaign or a cult? I think we've seen evidence that suggests it may be both. Do we need to ask questions? Good and company are promoting a kid's backpack for disclosure. Shouldn't any parent know the occult influences and character involved in the people promoting this work? They're developing therapy networks for dealing with disclosure. So we're all supposed to trust our deepest emotions and feelings to some group with no vetting whatsoever? Ramsar and Good guessed that no one would be watching as they consolidated the disclosure market with sites like Full Disclosure Now and Full Disclosure Project. They thought the alternative community would turn a blind eye as they milked the ideas and research of countless heroes of ufology and turned it into a twisted cult theme of Corey Good as a time-traveling messenger of blue avians. They thought that Corey's kid marketing scheme would be promoted and rifled so fast through the independent media that no one would stop to ask questions about why young adults were being touted as experts in the secret space program. They thought they could tie their names to researchers like Linda Moulton Howe, who worked a lifetime to bring the truth about UFOs to the public. They thought they could hijack the deep research into the missing trillions of the secret space program brought forward by former Assistant Housing Secretary Catherine Austin Fitz and author Joseph P. Farrell. They counted on the fact that they could intimidate real journalists into silence with bellicose legal threats. They counted wrong. I'm Dark Journalist. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in part four of my New Age Deep State series. See you then.